as tech continues to improve, so too does it become much, much easier to actually use. Maybe not for the hardcore techies who want to be able to control everything going on in their system at an absolute base level, but much, much easier for the general people who don't really care about things like their computer or their phone. All they care about with it is that it does the thing they want it to do. They don't care how it does it. As long as it does the thing, that's all that matters. And as people grow up with these really, really powerful computers and phones, you're going to start seeing people who don't understand basic functions. Things like, what are folders? This article from PC Gamer titled, Students Don't Know What Files and Folders Are, Professors Say, has been making the rounds on YouTube and Reddit and all of these other places. And a lot of people are sort of like mocking this and like, haha, how do you not know what a folder is? Obviously, everyone using a computer knows what a folder is, but I don't think that's necessarily the case. I think there's going to be a lot of people who actually do treat computers like this. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing or a good thing. I am more interested in how this actually starts to occur. So if you have even a slight interest in computers, you would understand that when you save a file on your computer, let's say a uh, an image, that file is going to be stored in some specific folder on your system. Maybe you're going to store it in your pictures directory or somewhere else like that. But you're probably also not going to have just everything just jumped into that folder. You're going to want to have some sort of, you know, ordering system. And that's where you have subfolders. Maybe you have your memes and your, I don't know, your holiday photos and your homework folder. And you put these files into these folders to make it so it's much, much easier to find them. When you want to go and find that file, you know it's going to be located in that specific location. Maybe you'll use a search function to get there, but you still have an understanding that it's stored in a folder. And search tools have existed for a very, very long time. For example, Find, a standard tool on Unix-based systems, has existed since, I think, 1973. And Find is still an absolutely fantastic tool, and it still sees a lot of frequent use today. But compared to some of the search tools we have today, Find is very, very rudimentary. Take, for example, Spotlight on macOS, Windows Search when it actually worked on Windows, and the countless third-party tools, all powered by machine learning and other buzzwords that make things better, I guess. With a tool like that, you don't really need to care where it's located. You can just say, I'm going to search for this thing, and it'll show it. In a lot of cases, you don't even need to know the exact name. It can sort of interpret, based on the searches you've done before, what you're trying to find. So with that in mind then, the idea of folders basically just fades away and becomes irrelevant and you don't really need to learn about them. If a program wants to save a file in some weird random directory that you would never actually go to, it doesn't matter because you can just search for it. If you want to say like import some information off your phone, who really cares where it gets saved to? If you download something with your web browser, it'll probably go to your downloads folder, but I could just search for it. So I'm not going to bother sorting stuff out. When you have these incredibly powerful search functions, it doesn't matter where stuff is. But then you combine that with cloud or online storage, which basically acts as just like an extra place to dump files. Sure, if you're a sensible person who actually likes stuff being organized like I am, I'm not that organized, but organized to at least some extent, you're going to go and put subfolders in there and say, okay, this is this stuff, this is my documents, my pictures, my games, my whatever. But you don't really have to. You can just treat it like an big dumping ground and just throw it in there. If you're never going to open up your file browser anyway, well, you're never going to really see how unorganized it actually is. And then we take into consideration phones, where both iOS and Android do expose the file system. And if you do want to go and actually work out where stuff actually is, you can actually go and do so. But you don't really need to. So a lot of Android skins are going to have a file browser that defaults to looking something like this, where 
it doesn't tell you where stuff is located. It sort of just splits stuff up into what they are. So in this one, we have photos, videos, audio, documents, APK, archives, and downloads. Those all have a file path actually directing to them on my file system somewhere, but if all I care about is where are these images, I can just go into images and find exactly what I want. The way that people interact with their phone is incredibly important for the way that people actually use computers, because phones are ever increasingly becoming basically people's main computing device. I know people who are not in the tech space who don't own computers who just do everything they want to do on their phone like all of the apps they want to have are on their phone and all of their data is stored directly on their phone or in iCloud or some other like Dropbox things like that I don't understand it that seems absolutely insane to me but if you go from doing everything on your phone and then you get a job where you actually need to use a computer you're probably gonna treat your computer like you treat your phone and not really care too much. If you're watching this video, you probably think that this way of interacting with the computer is absolutely insane. But there's something very important to keep in mind. Even if you say, I don't care about computers, I just I just do stuff with my computer, or I don't care, get rid of computers, blah blah blah, all of that sort of stuff. If you're watching a video from a channel like mine or any sort of tech channel out there, you are already like 10, 20 steps above that dude who literally does not care about a computer, who if their computer disappeared from their life, nothing would really change except for the fact that it would make their job harder. The sort of person who not just doesn't know about computers or doesn't care about computers, the sort of person who doesn't want to know about computers because it's just not information that is important to them whatsoever. They look at their computer or their phone like a box that does things and it does the things they want it to do, and they don't remotely care how it does them. If a component breaks with it, they will send it to a repair guy or just buy a new one. I'm sure you've met someone like this before where if their computer monitor dies, they will think there is a problem with the computer itself. Like, this is the sort of person who doesn't care about where things are located on their system and will just do it in the simplest way possible, which right now is using these powerful search functions. There is one thing I cannot forgive though, and even if I didn't care about folders, I would not do this. So there's one quote in this article that says, my family always gives me a hard time when they see my computer screen and it has like 50,000 icons. I don't understand the people who just dump a bunch of stuff onto their desktop. Like, I have a desktop wallpaper because I sometimes want to look at it. There is a reason why I run a window manager where I don't have any desktop icons. Even back when I was on Windows 10, I did not have desktop icons. I don't think I've had a desktop icon that didn't just suddenly appear for maybe like five or so years. I don't put stuff on my desktop because I don't want to see it. If, like... If I didn't care about my wallpaper, I would just have a black wallpaper, and then maybe it's fine to have icons all over your desktop. But if you set a wallpaper, why? Why do you have icons on your desktop? Do you not want to see the wallpaper? What was the purpose of setting that wallpaper? Now, obviously, not all Zoomers are completely incompetent when it comes to technology, as you can see from my existence, but... I guarantee these people exist. I don't think they exist to the extent that the article makes them seem like, where it's like every single student doesn't understand how these folders and files work. But if you're going into like a journalism degree, a science degree, things where using a computer isn't the primary focus. It's something that uses a computer, but the computer itself is sort of secondary to everything else you're doing. I can totally understand that there would be a lot of people that are going into these degrees who don't know how computers work. Now, if you're going into a computer science degree and you don't understand a folder, uh, I recommend dropping out before you start because you will not get very far. Some people might scoff at the idea of people using a computer differently in the way that they do. How dare the normies use a computer differently from me? They shouldn't be allowed to use a computer, but honestly, 
I think this is just generally a good thing. I have said it before, but I am just really a techie at heart, and I like to play with these toys even if it's not the primary way I am going to be using my system. As long as I can go back to what I like, I am happy to see other people basically being able to use a computer without having to worry about all of the other stuff that they would have had to five, maybe ten years ago. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you think this is a good thing that people can really just use a computer and not have to care about even just basic stuff that it can do? Or maybe you think in the complete opposite direction and we should go back to doing everything from a terminal and we shouldn't even have like any like well formatted documentation. You should just have to go and like work it out yourself. Go and read through the source code and just do it like that. I would like to hear your thoughts in the comments. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to Only Bearer Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays where I live stream twice a week, upload about five or so YouTube shorts, and this channel is available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.